Hello Bloomington, I'm Mayor Tim Bussey and this is the Council Minute for the week of December 12th. Back on December 5th, the City Council discussed in closed session development proposals submitted for the potential sale of 700 American Boulevard West. The City owns the property, which is just under two acres and is located at the northwest corner of Lindale Avenue and American Boulevard. It's next door to REI and the Bauer Hockey Store. In early September, the city had released a request for proposals to sell and develop the property. It's in a great location, and honestly, it's been vacant for way too long. And given the prominent location, the city specifically requested proposals that would highlight this corner as a gateway to the city. Three developers submitted proposals, and ultimately, the council directed staff to begin negotiations with Schaefer Richardson. Schaefer Richardson brings more than 27 years of experience in development working on residential, commercial, and mixed-use projects. Unfortunately, under state law, that's about all I can say right now. Details aren't public yet, but the development proposal will go through all of the normal public hearings and notification processes once a development application is submitted. It's exciting because this is the third project that we've talked about in recent weeks that would redevelop a notable area in Bloomington. Last week, we talked about the Europolis expansion, that would be a long needed redevelopment at the intersection of 90th and Penn. And back in November, the council approved the Oxborough Heights apartment complex that will provide 125 units of affordable, independent senior living units. It's located on 93rd Street, just to the east of Lindale. Bloomington is pretty much a developed city. Unlike Lakeville or Woodbury, we don't have vast tracts of wide open, undeveloped land where homes or businesses can locate. So our challenge is to find opportunities for redevelopment of existing areas, or what's called infill development. That's development between or alongside existing properties, and that can be a challenge for a lot of reasons. Many times an area that would be perfect for redevelopment is owned by a number of different property owners, which makes it tough to assemble the needed land. Sometimes environmental contamination is a concern. A lot of times it simply comes down to money. Infill development is complex and unique in a lot of ways, which makes those projects more risky, which makes it harder to secure financing from risk adverse investors. The fact that we have three exciting redevelopment projects in the pipeline right now tells me that developers see Bloomington as a good place to work and that city staff is doing a good job of identifying potential sites, cultivating important relationships with developers and working to remove obstacles. These projects will refresh and renew our community. They'll bring in new businesses and residents and will make Bloomington a place where people want to be. I'm looking forward to sharing even more of these examples with you in 2023. And speaking of development, last week the City Council and the Port Authority met in a concurrent meeting. The main agenda item was to consider amending the spending plan for tax increments from the Mall of America Tax Increment Financing Districts. The meeting got a lot of attention in the media and on social media, and frankly, there was a lot of confusion about what we did and why. I want to take a minute to try and clarify things for you today. First, some quick background. Back in 2021, the state legislature passed a law that gave cities and port authorities new flexibility for using tax increment financing, or TIF, through a specific spending plan. The 2021 law is similar to one that was passed in 2011 following the last big economic downturn. The purpose of both was to spur economic development and in 2021, especially to get the Minnesota economy going again after the pandemic. Here in Bloomington, we put that new flexibility to use in March when the City Council and the Port Authority approved a spending plan of up to $55 million for the proposed water park project at Mall of America. Looking back at that approval, Staff concedes now that they may have been too focused on the water park and the agreement that passed in March actually limited our flexibility and possible uses of the available tax increment funding. So last week, staff brought to the council and to the port a modified spending plan. That's what we discussed at the meeting and here's what that plan does and what it doesn't do. First of all, the new plan eliminates the spending plan approved in March and increases the amount in the spending plan from the original 55 million to 92 and a half million. Why that amount? The law says that a spending plan can include any amount of tax increment received by December 31st. We expect the Port Authority will have $92.5 million in this specific account by the end of the year, and including that entire amount provides the most flexibility. 
Second, the revised spending plan includes some specific project ideas, including an indoor water park, a sports complex, and an event or entertainment facility. Those were included in the plan because the state auditor requested that all cities include some of their ideas in their plans. Those are all projects that have been discussed at one time or another around here, but simply having them listed doesn't make them a requirement. I'll put a pin in this, I'll come back to this in just a minute. Third, the revised plan provides a lot more flexibility for both the council and the port. Fourth, the law says that if we're going to use the tax increment in the spending plan, we need to do so by December 31st, 2025. Finally, the plan keeps us on par with other cities. We're not doing anything out of the ordinary here. Other cities are also revising their plans to maximize flexibility, but their project lists don't include the potential high-profile projects we've discussed. So that's what the plan does. Here's what the plan doesn't do. First, other than the water park, there is not a specific project being proposed as part of this amendment. As I mentioned, the auditor wanted projects listed in the plan, but that language doesn't obligate the city and the port to pursue those projects, and it doesn't prevent the city and port from seeking other ideas. We already have council and port agreement on funding for the water park, so you'll see that in the new plan, but we're nowhere near a project like a sports complex. Second, no funds were committed to any project last week. As I keep saying, the new plan simply provides flexibility. Finally, the revised plan doesn't commit the port to spending the entirety of the $92.5 million TIF. The spending is authorized, but it's not required. I hope that helps clear things up a bit. This can be very confusing to everybody, and you can see that in the discussions we had at the Council and Port meeting last week. And I'll admit, we dropped the ball on this in terms of communications. We should have anticipated the public interest, planned for the questions we knew would be asked, and gotten ahead of the confusion as much as possible. That's our bad. As always, we'll try to learn from this and be better next time. The next steps are now to try and find suitable projects for this spending plan. Projects that will create jobs, support our local economy, and continue to make Bloomington an international destination. And before any action is taken on any project, public meetings will be held by both the City Council and the Port Authority. Finally today, you know that back in July, edible products with THC were legalized in Minnesota. THC is a cannabis ingredient that is extracted from hemp. The law allows retail sales of THC products to people over 21 and includes rules about the packaging and the potency of the product. In response to this new law, cities around the state have been making decisions about how to best regulate retail sales of THC products. Earlier this month, the City Council approved an ordinance that regulate sales of THC products in Bloomington. The regulations are similar to those we currently have for tobacco. For example, any business that wants to sell THC needs to get an annual license and pay a $175 license fee. Licenses will only be issued to a fixed place of business. There's no mobile sales of any kind allowed. Like tobacco, self-service sales are prohibited. They need to be behind the counter, unless the business is a 21 plus business and at least 90% of its revenue is from the sale of tobacco or THC products. Licenses will not be issued for locations within 500 feet of any school, and the city will conduct regular underage sales compliance checks. Now, we don't expect this to be the end of the discussion regarding THC products. Legislators have already said there will be additional changes to laws regarding sales of cannabis products in this session. As the law evolves, the city will adjust accordingly. For now, the new ordinance provides restrictions to prevent sales to minors, gives the city a good mechanism for communicating with retailers that are selling THC products, and is consistent with how other cities have regulated THC. That will do it for this week's Council Minute. Thanks for joining me today. Until next time, stay safe, Bloomington.